Good morning, guys. Sadly, it is the last day of Monterey Car Week, but that means it's time to go to Pebble Beach. Look how beautiful the Pebble Beach golf links look right now. We are back at Mercedes with the SL63 that I drove on the first day of Car Week, but check out this beautiful Mercedes 540K. One of these just sold at auction for $9.9 .9 million. New G-Wagon 4x4 squared. Look, it's so tall, they built steps so that people could walk up and look inside. First time they made an AMG version of the 4x4, as the last one was a G550. Looks pretty wild. We are on the outskirts of the Pebble Beach Golf Course, and Bugatti's got a insane setup. We've got the Chiron Super Sport, sitting next to a Chiron Pure Sport. Check out the rear end of the Super Sport with that extended length crazy stacked tailpipes but i feel like the pure sport front end is more menacing than the super sport and then look at the wing on this thing that is crazy it actually makes a normal chiron look tame the new w16 mistral roadster up on the stand that thing is so cool Heading into the putting green area, the practice green of Pebble Beach, where they have all of the concept cars lined up on the lawn. Two Zingers sitting here. I love the wheel design on the new Zinger VMAX. All right, we are here on the concept lawn, starting with the Hennessy Venom F5. Really cool mix of concept cars this year. Look at the new Delahaye. This thing is absolutely insane. Single seat layout. Oh, I guess there's a second seat behind. Damn. The new DeLorean. That's actually pretty epic. New Koenigsegg with both an automatic and manual gearbox. Cool Genesis concept as well. And then check out this Taycan that's made of every single different color possible. It's even got cork in the interior. Bentley Batour. Lucid just came out with a more powerful version of the Air called the Sapphire with 1200 horsepower and promises to be faster than a Tesla Model S Plaid. Pretty insane. Look at that, it's even got carbon ceramic brakes. I imagine learning from the fact that the Tesla Plaid doesn't slow down very well. How insane is the interior in this Lincoln concept? That is wild. The pedals are made of glass. Code 57 Berlinetta. Gotta love seeing manual hypercars. I like the fact that you can see the motor exposed out of the hood. That's pretty crazy. Another supercar I've never seen before, Deus Automobiles, came out with a new vehicle. The interior actually looks really nice in this thing. Lamborghini just unveiled a new car, although it's not really all that new. The Performante version of the Urus, a little bit more power, lighter weight. It's also got an off-road mode that's different from the previous car. Look how dirty it is. I like that they left it like this to put it on display to show what it's capable of, but uh, probably the majority of these owners will never take it off-road. The annual inflation rate in the U.S. has risen to 9.1% as of June 2022. That's the highest it's been since November of 1981, back when the Oldsmobile Cutlass was the most popular car on the market. So yeah, it's been a while since we've seen price increases like these. So what do you do if your money's no good in a bank or an investment account? In situations like these, we can take cues from the world's best investors. Last year, a groundbreaking study by Ernst & Young revealed that eight out of 10 ultra high net worth individuals invest in alternatives. B of A's CIO recommends investing in one high performing alternative, fine art. Last time inflation was this high, art appreciated by an unprecedented 33.2% annually. Only there's one problem. Folks like you or I don't exactly have millions laying around to invest in Monet's and Banksy's. That's where Masterworks comes in. As someone who appreciates art and investing, Masterworks gets me really excited, especially during Monterey Car Week, the week to celebrate valuable appreciating vehicles. Masterworks is helping you keep your cash intact by allowing fractional investments in the top 1% of the art world. Since 2019, they've sold six paintings with an average return to investors of 29.1%. That's during COVID, a bear market, and scathing inflation. Legally, I'll add, past performance doesn't guarantee future results 
results, but there's a reason why they have over 500,000 members on their website. That, combined with the fact that they speak to every investor to make sure the art is right for them, means there's a wait list. But I've got you guys with priority access to skip the line, and it's as easy as clicking the link in the description below. Gorgeous classics waiting to be judged at Pebble Beach. I love the triple headlight setup on this car, and look at the sunroof. It's all glass and opens up. This is just gorgeous. 1911 Lazier Type 51 Lakewood Touring. This is one of the most stunning vehicles I have ever seen in my entire life. Look at the wheels on this. Look at this, a Michigan license plate from 1912. Look at that, the most expensive car in the world just casually driving on the 18th fairway of Pebble Beach. This thing sold for $70 million at auction. Beautiful V12 Lincoln. How cool is this Michigan plate from 1939 with just the number 22 on it. 1937 BMW 328. Could you imagine if 328 eyes looked like this nowadays? <laughs> so cool. Talbot Maserati. That is stunning. I've never seen this car before. I love the vents in the front hood. 1952 Mercedes W194 Coupe. It's got gullwing doors like the 300 SL, but almost kind of has Porsche 356 Speedster vibes to it. That is just epic. Look at the single side exit exhaust. So this is a 1950 Cadillac Series 61, dubbed the Monster. I'm guessing because of its looks, but it's kind of badass. Ferrari 250TR59. Talk about a stunning classic Ferrari race car. I love the fact that you can see the engine popping out through the hood there and the blue interior is just breathtaking. I don't know if the scale comes across on the camera, but it's also really, really tiny. Look at its little windshield wiper. That's amazing. 1936 Bugatti Type 57G, dubbed the Le Mans Tank. I imagine you can guess why. That thing is wild. Look at this, it's got headlights on the side of the car, but it also has headlights on the front of the car. <laughs> that is wild. Ferrari 250 LM. I love the fact that it's unrestored. Look at all the rock chips in the front bumper, despite the fact this is probably well north of $20 million. Incredible Porsche 935. I always love that slant nose design and those wheels. Beautiful Mark II GT40. Mark IV GT40, that actually looks significantly different than the other GT40s of that era. Mercedes C9 Group C race car. This has to be one of the coolest looking Mercedes of all time. I love the silver with the bright orange accents. Look at the side tailpipes stacked on top of one another. Knock a ducks on the side. And then the new Ford GT Le Mans car. 1909 Stanley E2 steam powered car. It's got 10 horsepower from a twin piston engine. And check out how crazy the operation of the vehicle is. One, look at this amazing horn right there. Four different pedals and all of these little things you need to turn to operate the vehicle. I like how the shifter doesn't have a shift knob. And then look in the back, the tail light is actually a spot for a candle. <laughs> that is amazing. And then this 1912 Roush and Lang electric roadster. Yes, that's right. Electric cars aren't a thing of the future. They actually made a fully electric vehicle all the way back in 1912. Oh, yes, please. Look at that. Oh my gosh. In 1912, at least in Newport, Rhode Island, a third of the cars were electric. Wow. And the reason being that wealthy families who summered in Newport, Rhode Island uh, considered it very appropriate for women to drive electric cars because you turn the key, you push the lever, and you go. You don't have to crank start them, there's no smell, there's no sound. So um, we know from Elizabeth's diary, you know, she, she would say, we're going automobiling this afternoon. 
means just like out for you know for fun cruise. But you know, tiller steering appropriate when you're wearing a dress. And then left hand on the throttle, right hand on the tiller, and that's a, and it's very simple. I mean, we could drive around this lawn once, and you would be perfectly comfortable driving it for the rest. Of the and is this the brake pedal down here? So, yeah, brake pedal with a parking brake, but also Very um, when you pull back on this, you go from forward to neutral to um, a drive shaft brake. So you can control your speed wow. just with your hand. Apparently, this 1956 Citroen 11BL is powered by coal. That's right, it's like an old train. Some of the drivetrain components just sticking out. I wonder if this is a bag of coal on the roof. That's hilarious. And if we come around to the other side, we can check out the engine. Unbelievable. Oh yes, your classic coal gas carburetor. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in my life. They've even got a whole schematic for how it works. That's pretty awesome. This 1963 Chrysler is powered by a jet turbine engine. They made 55 of these, only nine still exist. Apparently these are coolers on the side so that the gases that exit out the tailpipe aren't burning hot. They're actually cooler than standard <laughs> exhaust gases. Now I thought at first that this is the turbine going through the actual interior, but it's actually just for looks. If you slide that back, it's an ashtray. And then check out the rear of the car. <laughs> that is so cool. Getting another look at the new McLaren track only V10 hypercar, the single seater Solus from the Gran Turismo game brought to life. This thing looks so crazy. I love the exposed suspension work, how small the passenger compartment is. This has to be the best sounding McLaren they have ever made. So many automobile manufacturers make epic concept cars that are out of this world but never actually come into production. So the fact that they took a car, the Vision Gran Turismo concept, and actually made it a reality is a really cool thing. This car easily has the best rear windows of any vehicle I've ever seen. It has portholes like a boat. <laughs> That is so cool. Look at the interior as well. Oh my gosh. And look how well the matching luggage fits inside there. That is so cool. This is called a Railton Hudson. You think Rolls Royces are fancy with their tray tables. Look at this. <laughs> Drop dead gorgeous 250 GTO Scaglietti Berlinetta next to another 250 GT long wheelbase. Look how big the hood is on this. And I'm loving the red with the blue interior. 1955 Ferrari 410 S Scaglietti Spider. I wonder if they took some design inspiration for the Monza SP1 from this car. Here's a Ferrari I've never heard of. 1954 Ferrari 121 LM Scaglietti Spider. Another single seater. I mean, that is to die for. Look at the interior on this old Ferrari. Such a unique material used for the dash, the door sills. And then once again, those stunning blue seats. 250 GT Cal Spider, but I've never seen one with the hard top on. I love the two-tone hard top. That is so classy. 1969 Auto Bianchi 112 Bertone concept car. It looks almost like a boat. It's so small. And then from the rear, what an epic design. Another car with headlights in a crazy position behind the driver's head. 1964 Alfa Romeo Zagato. Kind of a Daytona Coupe style rear end. So tiny, such beautiful lines. Loving the color. One of the cleanest engine bays I've ever seen. Beautiful 63 Cobra. Check out the Weber carburetors. 
Valentino Balboni. 1935 Duesenberg La Grande. I love how the headers come out of the side. But the coolest part about this car to me, when have you ever seen a vehicle that has a windshield for the rear occupants? Check that out. And they also have a covering for their legs down in there. <laughs> that is wild. Check out the cars in this driveway. There's an Enzo tucked away. Oh, two Enzos. An F50, another F50, F40. That is insane. Well guys, I can't even believe it, but unfortunately, car week is over. It's always my favorite week of the year, and this year did not disappoint. From driving the new SL63 to the CLK Black Series, to seeing the latest reveals from Bugatti, McLaren, Koenigsegg, hanging out with friends, reuniting with people from all around the world, and meeting a bunch of you guys, it was just such an absolute blast. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. Okay.